to start it out like this. This is a box that will eventually be sent to Miss Perfect. So the paintings. Yeah, all on these uh, sort of canvases. Uh, we have a little stuck problem. There's her mother. Jesus saves. Of course, I don't use that kind of language anymore. Or I try not to. Can't say that I. Well, I haven't. I actually haven't said that word in a long, in a while. Here's a. I changed it from Mary Magdalene. Now she's the the mother. You know, to more to be the the, the mysticism of the Vir Blessed Virgin Mary. There's a, her with her beautiful daughter. Yeah. Yeah. Happy couple. You know, and then this is the family portrait one. More to come, but this was all like kind of chacal like based stuff. I'm kind of moving away from that, as you can see with this one. And uh, you know, when the inspiration strikes, I'll uh, you know, I'll I'll, be, I'll do that. Let's see, let's get this one, you know, for the episode. One side. Yeah, before I give her a call, I just want to look at this crazy guy. Check this out. One night I just, I don't know, must have got like drunk or something to listen to uh, Jesus Christ Superstar and trying to find out how many times he said listen. Because in the album he says listen a whole lot of times. And look at all this crazy writing. It's crazy stuff. You know, sidetrack, but I just saw this and I was like, I flipped open. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> oh man. Is this a good view? Am I gonna be even in the shot? Or a little like that? Hmm? Can you see this painting? Should I put it behind me like this? Or oh, how's this gonna work? I was thinking about it, but obviously I didn't really think it through. This will be a very special episode because I'm gonna give her Miss Perfect Crystal a call, and if she answers, well, we got a special. The episode went from being. You know, boring to being special, you know? Because I'm tired of talking to myself in this thing and explaining stuff. Or just talking... No, I'm not, I'm not tired of talking about Jesus, but I mean, it's just like, why do it with this mechanism? So, let's give her a call. Oh, first, let's start this car. You know, let's start this steed. The holy steed, the holy vessel. Riding with Jesus, based on the Most High. Holy Ghost riding with it. It's hot today. I gave uh, Amelia another call, but uh, once again to her answer machine. This time I left my name because I realized I didn't do it. So I called twice. I'm not going to call again. You know, because that's a little weird. Because it's just like, well, you know, I don't know how these things work. But it just, you know, you want to chat, you want to chat. We can talk, you know. Talk about Jesus. She said in the note she wants to get to know me, so it's like, uh, I think it's more than that. But, uh, weird that I'm talking about this. There was a guy who teared up yesterday when he saw me. Uh, well, I mean, his pastor, you know, uh, he's in prayers. I don't know him personally, but he had a stroke. And, uh, you know, he saw, he saw me, he's like, you're the, you're, the, you're the man with the Jesus car, aren't you? Well, he said, you, you, actually, he was like, he knew, he was like, you're the guy with the Jesus car. And I was like, kind of taken aback. I mean, I look like the way I do, but I was just like, you know, some people, they come up to me and they say that. They go, you're that guy, aren't you? My kids love your car, you know? That's so cool, you know? Making Jesus Christ cool. That's a, one of the, that's what, that's what this is, uh, I guess, the mission to try to do, but I'm not really a cool guy, you know? I mean, I just go with the flow. But I mean, it is cool just, you know, I mean, well, my art is like, I guess, cool because it's just me, you know what I mean? So, uh, but I'm not gonna sit here and toot my own horn about being cool or not being cool or cringe or cringe lord, edge lord, Jesus Christ is the Lord. <laughs> cringe lord, boogie to that. But uh, this man was tearing up and he was just like, it's people like you, you know, showing, you know, he was, he was so serious. He was a dad, he was very serious. And it was like, you know, I was like, amen, bro amen brother, you know, because he was, he was just like, people need to show it, you know, this world's going, uh, this world's going to the dumps, you know, our, this country's going to the dumps. And I was just like, 
man, you know, like everything you're saying is like, uh, you know, I mean, I was going to say Jesus Christ is my political compass, but he was just, he just had to talk, you know, and I just listened, you know, and gave him a hallelujah, you know, you know, because it is a, it's a beautiful thing, you know, people are, uh, people that are receptive, they, you know, they, they, they feel, they respond and, and back, you know, these, the one, this lady's kids thought I was like a superhero or something, you know, I'm like, oh my goodness, uh-oh, you know, I don't want to, I'm going, I'm venturing into the territory now that I'm known, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm no role model, you know, Jesus Christ is the role model, me, man, no way, you don't want to be modeled after me, man, I'm like, I'm trying to get out of here with Jesus' help, try to get, walk the right, the right beat, you know what I mean? Trying to get it, trying to get this right in this life, you know. <sighs> Maybe, yeah, get a little known, you know, with Jesus' help, because we're preaching about Jesus every day, man. My name is John, for, for goodness' sakes, you know, a voice in the wilderness. I gotta be preaching. So, uh, oh, I got sidetracked. Let's uh, let's call Miss Per perfect. And take the. Uh, I should have took the back road. Shoot. Because it would be a, a better uh, way of having a conversation. Let's, let's see here. I gotta go to contacts. I just gave me a ply last night. It was very touching. So I was like, a, put, her, put her name in the contacts here. There we go. All right. Let's see. Let's see if this is uh, if this is supposed to happen. Hiya, Miss Perfect. <laughs> hey, John. <laughs> oh, cool, cool. I, uh, uh, I gotta tell you uh, that uh, I'm, I am. This is a New Jersey drive riding with Jesus, based on the most high. Holy Ghost yeah. riding the whip. How exciting! Yeah. So glad you called me. Oh well, you know, thank you for the touching message last night. You know, I mean, I thank you. Yeah, of course. Good to hear from you. Oh, likewise. Uh, I wanted to again, like, uh, thank you for the uh, that portrait. It was absolutely beautiful. It reminds. I would love to send it to you. Whoa. Well, I I still have the paintings uh, of the series here, uh, but like. The th I came to I'm um, coming to this little thing where it's just like a, I ha I was do using Chacal to uh, you know uh, as the trying to when applying the paint and I'm kind of like trying to get past that. So uh, I have no idea what that is. I'm so. <laughs> oh, uh, Mark Mark Chacal, the uh, the artist, the, uh, the the style. Oh right right. Yeah, the style that I was painting in. I was like, uh, well, I kind of reached the end of the road with that one. Yeah, I love those paintings. They're so beautiful. Well, well, thank you. You know, just you got a beautiful family there. Thank you. Are you doing mommy stuff? I am. You know, my daughter right now, she's peeing in the bathroom. She has like this obsession with the toilet. We didn't get those clips for the toilet seat yet, so I just have to like watch her and tell her, no, don't put your hands in the toilet. Don't put your toys in the toilet. But you know. Kids will be kids. <laughs> yeah, there's a, yeah, there's like a fascination when you're a child with the toilet. It's like a thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Plus, it's been really hot over here, so you know, any source of water to play with is ideal. Oh, well, God bless you. You're in California, aren't you? No, actually, I moved to Olympia, and we're having a heat wave, so it's like it's supposed to be 113 today. Um, but our neighbors gave us an AC because they were worried about our daughter um, who was struggling without it. So now it's like it's like a night and day difference. It's so amazing that we have this. Oh God! Hi, God bless them. Wow. Yeah, it was really, really kind. I'm gonna have to do something sweet for them. I'm thinking I'm gonna, you know, give them gems and fruit, <laughs> whatever I have, to repay them for this. It's just so sweet. Say, uh, uh, say, say, like a healing prayer for her. 
or something like that. Uh, but I I don't re remember. Uh, was it da Dakishi? Is the uh... a Dakini? Oh, Dakini. It's, uh... I do think Dakishi is something though. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think there's um there's a prayer that I can do, a little mantra to besides giving them something physical of course and hopefully in the future I'll be able to repay their kindness again. Because it just it really does touch me that they were thinking about my daughter. There's a sense of community right there. Yeah, it was like what amazing neighbors. Like you really inspired me to be a better neighbor myself because you forget about the people that just live around you, you know, that uh, yeah, they're a part of your community, and um, it's really sweet. Uh, I'm at, I'm, uh, this is a, I don't, uh, Olympia, I don't know where that is. Oh, um, it's in Washington, uh, oh. so it's like a couple states over from California. But that's like uh, Olympia, like Bikini Kill, right? Like they were from Olympia? Sorry, say that one more time. Oh, uh, Kathleen, Hannah, uh, Bikini Kill, they were in Olympia, right? Or... I don't know if they're in Olympia or Portland. We're really close to Portland. Uh, I'll have to look it up. But yeah, I love Bikini Kill. I love Kathleen, Hannah. <laughs> Whoa! Hi. Are you um, on your way to work right now? Uh, oh, today's like my uh, day off Monday, usually. What are you gonna do today? Uh, I'm gonna go to the uh, easy truck driving school and learn, uh, or take some uh, practice tests, and then I'm not too sure uh, what else. It's just that uh, we'll see what the day brings. Free. Yeah, that's a good attitude to have. Yeah. That's cool. You're in school for truck driving. That's really awesome. Yeah, that's why I try not to swear too much. Well, that's just a good habit, yeah, to have. What, what, uh, what, what does the day bring for you? Well, it might be too hot to go outside unless we go out a little bit, like, soon. It's almost 90 degrees already. Um, so we might step out for a second. Other than that, we're just going to stay hunkered down and stay cool and try to entertain this little one because she has been a little bit, you know, in the house for a couple of days because it's just been so hot. Just trying to entertain her and keep her fed and happy. Uh, I, I can't. I can't imagine. I can't imagine that. Wow. Imagine having a baby. Yeah, yeah. Like a, you know, uh, what? Like a. With my sister, she talked about how the maternal instinct just like automatically just kicked right in. Like if you do go through pregnancy, you you know naturally start having that before even the father has to go through it. Like they say that the woman is like preparing for being a mother when she's you know because your body literally transforms and you become responsible for growing that you know that little seed into a baby. So naturally, you know your mother instincts start kicking in. Um, and yeah, it usually doesn't hit the mail until like shortly after the baby's actually been born because, you know, it's just like a whole different experience for the two parents usually. Wow. The miracle of life. It really is a miracle. It's crazy to witness. And she's getting so big so fast. and. It's just so trippy. So I'm like, wow, it's already been like two years on this journey. Of like, you know, being pregnant with her and then having her. And she's like more and more becoming like a little human that has her own, you know, mannerisms. She has her own thoughts, her own personality. She like has her own preferences. It's just, it's really cool to watch. Because we were all baby humans at one point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Like, um, did you, were you able to contact that woman who left you a note on your car? Oh, I gave her
her call this morning and uh, she uh, got the answer machine again. I left a, another message, but I figure you don't, you know, that, that should be that, you know, you left a, right. cause it's a little weird after that. Well, I hope she gets back to you. I just, you know, it's a, every day it's just a, 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 something happens. It's a, interesting. It's just like a, it's like a, it's an activation. It brings out people. Like a, all kinds of different types of attitudes and it's just neat to watch. But, you know, let's, let's, let's talk about like, uh, let's talk about your spirituality because I'm curious, you know what I mean? Like. Uh, I don't know too much about it. Yeah. Well, I'm no expert either, <laughs> but um, I, um, yeah, I've been getting into Buddhism a lot, and I just, it, it was kind of like calling me from the universe uh, before I actually committed to it. I was kind of just like having the imagery around me because it made me feel good, and, you know, I was looking up different quotes by different teachers and stuff like that um but recently i did uh i joined like a it's called a sangha and it's like a I, I forgive me if i don't say any of these words right because i'm still learning but i believe it's sangha and um it's like a group of buddhists basically and i joined one online they like use discord um the group is blessed by uh their spiritual leader their ring punch um and they were telling me, they're like, look, you, um, you should take refuge if you're, you know, really interested in, you know, kind of like a strengthening your practice and really starting your practice. And um, taking refuge is basically like making the commitment to, you know, follow the Buddhist path. And um, it's like a little ceremony. Um, there is a spiritual leader that um, does a lot of videos um, and does these ceremonies on YouTube so that people can access them wherever. So I actually took the refuge online where, I, you know, I watched his videos on the teachings. You take the vows through the videos and um, part of the ceremony is cutting off a piece of your hair. Um, normally he would cut off a piece of your hair, like just a tiny bit. So I, I did that and I sent it to him um, and I haven't received my refuge package yet, but it was a really, you know, beautiful thing. So I kind of did commit myself to the Buddhist path. And um, right now I'm working on the uh, Bodhisattva, the, the Bodhisattva <laughs> vows, which is, um, you know, most people that take on this path become Bodhisattvas, meaning that they want to commit their life to helping other people um, in the world, you know, freeing sentient beings, um, how they call it, freeing all beings from suffering. And the way that we start to do that is by freeing ourselves from suffering. So um, I'm reading this book right now that explains the vows in detail. And um, once I finish that book, I'm going to take his online vows again. Uh, I really am so glad that I found this person because he is just so all about like, you know, if you really want to access the teachings, which can sometimes be very restricted, like, you know, if you don't have this certain initiation, um, you know, they might not allow you to see certain texts or have certain practices, like, you know, but um, this certain teacher is really all about like self-empowerment and like if you really want to practice you know he has like resources available for certain things and you know so yeah i've been working with this uh teacher right now and, and i'm having the connection to the sangha you know they have their teacher and um, so it's nice to have multiple teachers as well so but yeah, I'm no expert. I'm still learning a lot, um, but it's really helped me because I really reached a breaking point at some point um, where I was just having a lot of trouble with dealing with my emotions and how I was handling life and how I was thinking about things. It was all very extreme and things would get really crazy. Like I would just, you know, kind of break down and go crazy and make stupid decisions and it was affecting my family life a lot and um you know especially having a new daughter who literally picks up everything that i do 
like and picks up on my emotions and stuff it was that was kind of the point where I was like okay no don't eat that <laughs> um it was the point where I was like okay I gotta make some change and Buddhism, Buddhism was just kind of like calling me to that so wow yeah um you say you're not an expert, but you're definitely on that path. Like, uh, wait, even like earlier than that, did Buddhism like come into your childhood, or was it uh, any earlier instances? Um, I've actually never really been exposed to Buddhism. Um, my first, um, my first interaction with it has actually been with one of my friends. Um, she was actually um, my husband's friend for a long time. That's how I met her. Um, and I had crossed paths with her in my life before through other uh, lovers because she was just like a person in my community. So um, she was actually Buddhist and her practice, you know, started getting stronger and she started becoming more committed. Like she's really on the spiritual path. And um, she has been kind of like my window into it. And uh she has shared with me what she could share and you know she's always sharing like the imagery and the imagery has always been very attractive and appealing to me um, because of, especially like it's strong uh, divine feminine aspects like your, I think it really encompasses well one what humans are as a whole and two divine beings you know even you know female divine beings being very strong and having many multiple aspects and um, wrathful compassion being another thing that is portrayed because, you know, humans have so many aspects to them, but, you know, wrathful compassion is like a mother's love, you know, like, you know, you stop your child from doing something in a certain way and it's like you're doing it for their benefit and it may seem like, you know, they're doing something bad. But, come here, baby. but, you know, they're doing it for your benefit to try to teach you. So, she was kind of my first window into it, and, and I started researching by myself, and um, the group I'm in now was like, yeah, you should really take refuge. Like, they're encouraging me to take a certain thing that, you know, kind of like how you're, like the order you're supposed to take things in. Like, you know, oh, if you want to do this practice, try to get this empowerment or this, um, this initiation, you know, just to start. So, so yeah, I, I was actually, I grew up Christian first and then, you know, I was into, I would call it paganism for a really long time. And it's not that these elements are apart from me or I'm, I just don't believe in them anymore. Like they're still a part of me. Um, it's just Buddhism has now taken the main focus and has um, put me on a very specific path. Oh, wow. You know, like this, this, this spiritual journey sounded a little very similar. Uh, do you... you <laughs> Hello, hi. Uh. Hi. She's like, what's going on? Why are you on the phone? I'm usually like completely focused on her. So yeah, you're saying our spiritual journey helps a lot. Yeah, and there's a there's a thing that I was going to ask you about uh, that. Uh, it, it sounds like you're on like the right hand path. You know, like, uh, whereas, like, on Buddhism, it's what, tantric, tantric Buddhism, which is the left? Uh, um, well, there's uh, different sects of Buddhism, so I believe there's, um, there's, yeah, there's some sort of tantric, there's Theravada, there's um, Mahana, there's, there's, so there's, like, multiple different sects, and for me right now, um, I have been connected to lineage, which is um, Vajrayana, but I consider myself non I don't know how to say this. non sectarian, which is like, you know, I'm not really picking a certain sect because um, all of the sects have like the same core beliefs. You know, like they, you know, they all take refuge in the three jewels. They all, you know, believe in the body sativa path. Like they all have very similar. Um, core beliefs and that's kind of where I'm at right now is um, 
although I have been connected to a certain lineage, I still am taking really all the core beliefs because there's also like Zen Buddhism, which believe they all have like slightly different paths to the same path, but they're essentially the same. Yeah, this, this, this is what I mean that we're like kind of have the same uh, uh, like a, in, a, in a lot of ways a spiritual uh, journey kind of similar similarities the uh, objectively yeah. speaking it's like you know you, you're you're like a you're well aware of like the orthodox or it's called like the traditional or lineage but then like uh, you, it mix and match and I wonder if this is a thing that like came from like uh, uh, like practicing forms of magic uh, or different systems like there's so many different types of systems of magic like it would be practicing chaos magic or then uh, or black white uh, or all different types of systems like uh, right. uh, I think it's like kind of like something perhaps that uh, like instead of just being like a you know indoctrinated into it or something like that uh, we similar similar uh, circumstances you, you went and you, you dabbled in all this other stuff and then you came to know all these uh, uh, symbols and what they meant or what they represented and and it just uh, like sticking to one sticking to one uh, system is just uh, it just it doesn't seem like it's sufficient I've had people like come up to me and tell me to come to their churches and then there's been all different types of people like with their churches there's one that has like a Nickelodeon theme they're like uh, we, we worship uh, you know our our uh, pastors they wear number one dad God is number one dad shirts and they got Nickelodeon microphones and they sit on a couch and then you got other ones that are like orthodox and strict and they're like come here and then there's Baptists they're like we you know come sing in our church so and it's just like, uh, I'll roll up to each one of them, but like, just sit down and settle for one, it's just, it doesn't seem like that's like a... Uh, I, I didn't get this. It seems like it could be more beneficial to, I guess, be around and learn more, because we're constantly learning. Right. I completely agree with that. And, you know, mentioning magic, magic's universal um, and like you said there's different vehicles to you know try to complete and learn and execute the magic but ultimately they all kind of operate in very similar like a set of rules and you know how it works so you know I do think that for most religions it can kind of be said the same way like you know although like you know, Christianity and Buddhism, you know, they're a little different, you know, they, um, you know, all, most forms of like Christianity would, yeah, they would kind of operate on the same core ideals normally. And, you know, same with Buddhism and, and then, you know, all operate usually on like having a set of like good moral things that you're supposed to do. And then, you know, bad things you're not supposed to do. And, you know, so Um, 
which is, you know, we've got things in this life, in this uh, place that we're at, this is suffering, and, but if you realize that it's all emptiness, meaning like, you know, it doesn't have the form that we see, it's all illusory, um, but it's, it, that doesn't mean that you, you know, take it with nihilism, like, it still exists. Um, it's just the nature of it that you realize that you can become in tune with your Buddha nature. And we follow the teachings of the Buddha who, you know, was the first to realize this. Uh, Buddha was, I believe he was a prince, you know, and he forsake all of his worldly attributes to go find enlightenment. And what he did... Siddhartha, right? Siddhartha? Yeah, I believe so. Um, And once he did, he... He set out to teach everybody what he knew. And um, so, yeah, it's not really uh, one creator. Uh, it's like, you know, Buddha nature, and everybody has Buddha nature, um, whether they realize it or not. And um, once you, you know, discover your Buddha nature, it's possible once you become enlightened, when you become reborn, instead of being reborn in like a lower realm or a hell, or, you a know, Malchus. being reborn as a human again, you could be reborn as a celestial being. Um, and that's why there's multiple Buddhas, there's multiple Bodhisattvas that exist in Buddhism. Do you, do you know the uh, the current uh, uh, Buddha? There's a child, right? Uh, I believe that there is, yeah. there's, And there, I think there's there might even be more than one living Buddha right now. Uh, I remember uh, King, King King of the Hill did a, a thing where uh, what is Bob, Bobby was <laughs> was a Buddha, you know, and and, and uh, all like forms of entertainment, all they do is mock. Oh, I remember mock. that episode. Yeah, they do mockery of spirituality, but like, mm-hmm. uh, what was, was it actually rooted in fact? Though it was that they he, they laid out like uh, silverware, or they did they laid out things, and then uh, if the child picked the right things, that was uh, how they de- decreed that that child was the Buddha. Is that, is that so? Right. Or? Um, I'm not really sure about the process. Like, I'm sure it's probably similar. I'm sure they picked that up from some sort of truth, but I believe that, like, maybe they do go seeking out certain celestial beings if one dies because they know that they'll be reincarnated and usually are, I think that some enlightened beings choose to be reincarnated on Earth again because they want to keep helping beings they want to keep being there of service to help other beings that are stuck in cyclic um, existence so I think they probably do have like you know some sort of process where they go and seek out certain people and they see like okay you know and they and then they talk to their fellow spiritual leaders like hey do you, are you seeing what I'm seeing you know can you check this person etc I think that th- this right here, what you just said, is probably like the the crux or like the the relationship that uh, I have as well. And uh, that like your yeah, uh, reincarnation, I fully believe in. And that like you come back into this life and you talk about spirituality, you do you preach it, you know the good word, whatever that good word may be, or that system that like uh, activates the spirit the spiritual you know self uh, or the selfless. And like, uh, it's like almost to serve mankind. And like, I, I just see Jesus Christ. Well, I shouldn't say that. Like, I see just as, but like an archetype of, of like the most sort of peaceful existence amongst humans. And that, mm-hmm. and that, uh, and it sounds as a, a Buddhism that yet yeah, you you come back to serve, and uh, you know, uh, blossom like a uh, humankind, and uh, I th- even more so. Well, I mean, in ancient times, it's probably the same deal, but, like, we're being, like, uh, engrossed with uh, a sort of, like, uh, uh, a creation that's, like, an AI cre- creation that is, like, uh, su- like uh, creating mass stuff, and that uh, people just go inside this void and then get lost in that and further away from their, you know, na- natural selves. Absolutely. Um, I think Buddhism, that right now they're calling this like, I think it's like the degenerative age. Like it's really like, you know, a crazy hectic age right now. 
because of, you know, like disease and yeah, people being further and further um, from spirituality and being revered for it, you know. Um, yeah, I think that's that's the age we're in. It's like more important than ever. And, and honestly, like you coming to me and us having our spiritual talks and, you know, our just how our our relationship has progressed because it's been like, I want to say like almost six months now or at least four months since we, you know, first started talking about this. Mm -hmm. Um, That is really, it really made me look into, like it was a turning point for me because it made me look into what I was considering my spirituality. And it made me, it was like part of the catalyst to like help me commit to Buddhism, honestly, because I was like, okay, you know, what is my spirituality? What, where am I right now with what's going on? Like, you know, I have these ideas and perceptions of what I am, but what truly is my practice? Like what, you know, like it wasn't really solidified. It was really just all ideas at that point. So I have to thank you for, you know, coming to me and to, you know, like you did touch me with spirituality and it really was like a turning point for me. Well, I thank you in return for being you. Wow. Yeah. I know. When I think of you, I think of, like, John the Prophet, you know? I don't know much about him, but that's that's just what I think of. What, the uh, the Baptist or the uh, uh, John? There's, there's, like, multiple Johns there. They've got the John in Revelation. Uh, oh. And these, the def- oh, I wouldn't attribute you. I wouldn't know much about it. Uh-huh. All I know is that I think you could be called that. <laughs> Don't you do it. <laughs> Back to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I hope I answered properly. I'm still pretty new to all. That I'm experiencing right now. Uh, well, I think everything that you said, you hit it on. You hit the uh, the nail on the the board. You know, you got it in there tight. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm curious, so I'm gonna have to be looking at some of this. I mean, I I got introduced to, into Buddhism when I was a uh, like a child. Uh, we had we, we was required reading uh, Sid Arthur, and oh. it was a captivating story because it was like what like a rich prince. Uh, decided to just throw it all away how'd that happen so that was just fairly compelling because right. it's like the opposite of uh, Jesus Christ you know he was a poor you know he's a he was a carpenter exactly that's very true and I don't, I don't know if there's a similarity between us but wasn't was there people trying to assassinate uh, uh, Sid, uh, the Sid Arthur I believe so yeah yeah the spiritual like the and just like a, with a Harad, they sent out all these murderers try to, to murder all these children. Oh my goodness, I don't, you know, just to find Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy how like people attack spiritual leaders, but I guess, you know, not everybody is on the same path and that, you know, there are, there is people out there that, is, that are suffering that um, are not completely aware of the havoc that they caused. And, um, like, I even think of the Dalai Lama, like, he was exiled from China. Um, he's a spiritual leader of Tibet. <gasps> Don't eat that. Um, but, um, but yeah, it, it's crazy that, you know, there will always be people that will be against what's going on and, you know, that, 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 that was kill people. That was, that was another, that was a catalyst right there. In the 90s, it was like, everybody was, like, free Tibet. You know, like they just the Tibetan people, the struggle it spoke to them. Yeah, it's, I mean they're still under Chinese um, control, I believe. Um, so yeah, the Dalai Lama has been exiled. <laughs> he's living. I'm not sure where he's living, but he's living somewhere else. He's not even living in Tibet. Um, but yeah, you know, he even still feels compassion for Chinese, you know, Chinese government and the people that have tried to kill him or whatever it's like that's kind of the admirable thing about people who are really spiritually realized is that they don't have hate for anybody that's like total that's 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 like beautiful thing that's like transcendence yeah at that point 
It's beautiful. The Dalai, I think the Dalai Lama was like a, I think he was a, called out the COVID-19. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Oh, 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 yeah. You got, you got mom, you got mama duties there. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's like my full-time job. But um, but yeah, um, it's been, it's been a great journey. And if you have any questions, you can always ask me. I'll try to, you know answer to the best of my ability um well that goes for you too that goes because i'm uh just like how you're with the you know you're in it and then you're all around it uh me with the christianity i'm kind i'm like the same thing because i'm going i'm doing the tab i'm going into taboo territory uh, there's a lot of like stuff that has been omitted there's a lot of mysteries you know there's all this sort of stuff well, I would love to hear what you're also finding as well. Share that with me. Oh, yeah, totally. Okay. That, thanks for... Oh, this is a special, this is a special episode. That, thanks for, thanks for uh, picking up the phone and, and uh, dropping some knowledge, you know. Thank you for allowing me. Yeah, I can't wait to um, speak with you again. All right. Awesome. God bless you, Crystal. And your, and your family there in the little... <laughs> <laughs> All right, John. I'll talk to you later, okay? Have an amazing day. Oh, you have too. Have a blessed day. Oh, you have a blessed day as well. Hallelujah. All right. Bye-bye. Well, that was really cool. Wow. Why did I say man? Uh, that's another thing. I think it stopped saying that. Man. Well, you know, us humans. You get a better parking spot. Ah, just chilled out here. I know smoking's bad, but I'm having it with my coffee. Just so often. Have a cigarette. Spiritual journey, it's real. It's the realest stuff. You know. I'm so glad she was uh, Crystal was able to tell us her story like that, you know. Uh, and we can put this online, you know. This that's just really cool. It's more than like uh, in these times, you know, or especially these times. Well, every time I think, you know. But it is a, that is a firm, you know, as I said, there's like a firm root here is that I think that people like her and I, we come back into this earth realm because this, your soul, souls are simply, simply just don't go away. They're, they go into other things. And seeing as how we're like into the immaterial world, that means that we're going to be like, uh, we like even when you were born, you knew of it. It just that all these things that happened up to this point got you to what you to this spiritual 